cool. Today is um, today is session number eight, and the schedule doesn't. We're not following the format, but we're sort of following the. Um, and you've got a copy of the November schedule. We're going to probably be adding a couple of things to that, which which I'm not. I, I guess I shouldn't even mention because I don't know when. But in November, there's going to be a couple of sessions on the purchase agreement, which Mike Sibilia, the broker, will do because he wants to. That's part of Ignite? Well, whether or not it's called Ignite or not, okay. right? But it's not one of the, sure, part of Ignite. <laughs> it's, it's a required class. How about that? The, the broker always <laughs> likes to explain how to fill out the purchase agreement. Right. And then we're also going to have, I'm throwing in some fun classes on inspections and reports, yay, and home warranties and things like that, which I've mentioned are all important for you to know. Right? So these I mentioned? are in addition to what you've already, you've already passed. Right. Th those will probably be happening in December. Okay. But the purchase agreement, we want to cover that as soon as possible so that you don't have any excuse for not writing up one. Okay. Right. Has it changed significantly? Changed, yes, significantly, probably not. Right, little tweaks have been made to it. But you, um, I would sit through Mike's class on the purchase agreement. Just saying. All right. So, um, anybody want to share how well they're doing on the daily ten four, the four habits of uh, build and manage your database, adding ten people every day. Anybody adding ten people every day? I haven't this week. I not. <laughs> okay. So honestly, I didn't do it this week. Anyone else wanna? No. No. Uh, no? Wow. F. I'll get an F today. Let, um, let me ask you a question. Yeah, sure. Let's say you have a very limited sphere. Back uh, in the old days, there used to be something called um, it was called the Yellow Pages. And and it was um, if you're young, you may be thinking, what the what's what, are, what what's that? And they actually still have them, and they're also online. Well, you have to grow up organically, basically. Well, no, what I'm what I'm suggesting is, and I have a script that I'd be happy to share with you. I don't have it like in my pocket, but I would. But it's um, and so what you do. Um, this is sort of an old school idea because obviously it's talking about the yellow pages. Well, you can achieve but, the same thing through door knocking. Well, no, let me just, let me just, let me, let me finish my, all right. So what you do is you start with the A's and you look at what it says. Uh, Ardvark um, nursery, right? How about air conditioning, right? And the question is, do you know anybody that's in the air conditioning business? Do you know anybody in the air conditioning business? Oh, all right. Do you know their, you know their name? Phone number, right? So you might want to write that down, right? And the, the script, the, so do you understand the idea of going through the yellow pages until you get to Z is, is that you're going to ask yourself, who do I know that does this? Who do I know that does that? Now, let's say you look at air conditioning and you say, I don't know anybody who does air conditioning. So pick somebody in that list on the yellow pages and call them up and ask if you can speak to the owner. And the way the conversation is going to go, by the way, do you think as a real estate agent, you're going to have sellers, buyers, or other clients that might have air conditioning needs, right? You ought to share that with them, right? And the way the script goes is you ask them, are you taking on new clients at this time, hmm? right? What do you, and their answer is probably going to be, yeah. yeah. And so you share that you, from time, your clients from time to time have air conditioning needs and that you'd like to meet with them and find out a little bit more about their business and maybe you could work together, right? Maybe, right? And so then you, you stop by, introduce yourself, give them your card, get their card and put them in your database, right? And you keep doing that. If you don't know enough people, start meeting people. Right, and when you run out of the yellow pages, the goal should be to add a hundred to maybe two. You, well, the goal is ten a day, right? We're starting with, we're start. This is, by the way, the first level goal is you want to be adding ten people a day into your database. The database that you want to be using is eEdge, right? And although I've showed you videos, when you know we're going to when we meet, I'll show you where you can find explanations and webinars on how to do this. But you want to add them into eEdge. 
when, and then launch what's called a 33 touch campaign. Right, and I'll show you how to do that. And so what that means is, is that these people are going to be on your mailing list. Right? I hear a ringing in my ears. That yeah. is my calendar. Oh, okay. Class is starting. It says, you're late for class now. All right, all right. All right. So that's a suggestion. All right. Where, and, and, and once you get that idea, the nice thing about real estate is everybody you know and everybody you meet is going to want to buy it or sell it, if not now, sometime in the future. And they all will know people that want to buy or sell it, if not now, sometime in the future. Right? And I've done business from people that sold tires and, um, you know, all sorts of things. Right? There, there's a story, this is, this is sort of a famous Keller Williams story where an agent was at a mall going around talking to people, handing the cards and that sort of thing, and asking for referrals, and eventually the security guard came and escorted her out of the mall, and on her way out, she said, by the way, do you know of anybody? Can I have your card? And she got a referral from the security guard and ended up selling somebody a house, right? So uh, I'm, I'm, you know, you know, and... and so um, if you think about it, there are people, how about contractors that do remodeling? Oh, yeah. Painters, right? Do you think they want to? I, I met a guy and he wanted to give me several of his cards. He was in the moving business. Uh, you know, he's in the moving business. It, when you start to think about all that we, we talk about in Keller Williams about leverage, which is allied resources, go through the book, see who would probably want to know a real estate agent, right? And call them and put them in your database. So if, you, if you're uh, talking to people and you, um, just like yesterday we were getting our Halloween costumes at the Halloween shop, <laughs> and we were talking, I said, uh, so I gave her my card. Yeah. Uh, it, does that count? Giving your card to people, it does, it's not that it does not count. One of the statistics that I show is if you give out a thousand cards and you get a half of a percent response, you're going to have like 50 people, but that's not, you want to get their card. Okay. You want to get their contact information. You want to put it in the database. It does not count for your daily habits. So you got to put it in. Put it right. Into your you daily. want to put it in. The idea is for this to count, you put it into eEdge, which is the Keller Williams Customer Relationship Management Software System, and launch a campaign and follow up with the people. Right? Okay. And... You're going to want to connect with 10 people a day, calling those people and talking to them and then going by uh, would count, right? And when you connect with people, that would mean on the phone or in person. It does not mean leaving voice messages for people. It doesn't mean sending them an email. It doesn't mean sending them a text message. Um, follow up, write 10 handwritten notes. Um, I got one from an agent in, uh, from another office in Morgan Hill that I, I had talked to her, and then she wrote me a note, right? So do you understand this is an unusual thing that people actually handwrite notes, right? This is a, it's an unusual thing. So it sort of stands out, and you should be previewing 10 homes a week. And what you want to do, and I, one of the things that I'm gonna, I've shared with you and those of you that are, are, haven't heard me, I have videos on how to use Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Tasks to organize your real estate business. What you want to do is time block every week the act these activities, right? So when you're going to do this. All right, any questions about that? Yes. Mail it. That's right. Put a stamp on it and put it in the mail. It freaks people out when they get something in the mail. Right? Freaks me out. That's not an advertisement. No. Do you put your business card? Yes, put your business card. The, the lesson number one, rev up, which you have a copy of, and I have recordings of if you have insomnia or something yeah, like that. It. Um, it talks about putting in your business card, and we even have samples as to what to say. Right. I right. understand yeah. that. Put in your business card. You want to, the idea is, is that you're supposed to run out of business cards, right? And so when people say to me, well, you know, I really think that I ought to, you know, add something, like I always like to put stuff on the back of the business card, right? I like doing, so people say, oh, I already branded my, I have 500 cards. Give them to people, right? How about that, right? Go and hand them out. 
and then you should be buying business cards, right? You don't want in five years when we move to a bigger location to still have half of your business cards, <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. I have a question. Yes. So, uh, uh, like, let's say I have an appointment today. So do I need to hand over the thank you card right on that time, or I can just let it down? The, if you have an appointment, do it later. Okay. Don't hand them the card and mail it to them. Okay. Right. Handing them a card is, is a little, you know, I wrote you a note, you know. <laughs> and they, it's like, well, why didn't you just tell me? Um, so it's a follow-up. So the idea is, is that if I talk to you in person, uh, if I talk to you on the phone, if I've had an appointment with you, after that, we send a, a thank you card, a little handwritten note card, okay. right? Agents that have been through my class started sending me cards because they wanted to count it as one of their 10, right? <laughs> I said, well, I'm not sure if sending me a card counts. But um, so this power hour, um, we watched the video. I'm not going to do this here, but you, um, how many of you have seen the have been able to find stuff on kw.com? Let me just, one of the things I want to point out, the, for those of you that, that, are, that this bears repeating, and therefore, whether it does or not, I'm going to repeat it. But once you log in to your KW account, I might have used a different login. One of the things that I want to point out that pops up right to the right eventually, is the next upcoming webinar, and there's a series on eAgency, which is one of the specialized web pages. And if you can't make it today, or you say, wow, this, there's a whole bunch of them and I've missed, where you, the way you find them, and I have to figure out where this is, you go to uh, technology and you go to eEdge. eEdge is the database program. And um, there's two different parts to this. Down here where it says live training online, if you click on that, it's going to show you the schedule of classes that are coming up, all right, that are live. So here's one about mobile apps. Now, I just want to show you how I sign up for these things. Let's say I want to go to this. First of all, notice every Monday is New Agent Monday. Right, every Monday, and so there's different classes. I, if you're a new agent, I would go to that. But let's say I wanted to go to the one, there's a new mobile app that Keller Williams has. I click on this, and what happens is it opens up in a new window, and I use a program called LastPass. And what LastPass does is it fills out forms for me. All right, so that's how long is it took me to do this. And it says, I've already registered for the following. I've already registered. Well, well. So the idea is all I have to do, let me, should I find one I haven't registered for? Um, all I have to do, let me um, mm -mm, get ready. Don't lose a lead. How about this one? I just, so we click here to register. My program fills out. Register now. Now, I click on Add to Outlook Calendar. I hit Save. I don't have Outlook. Although there's one there already, I let it replace it. And then I go to my calendar, and down here it says Other Calendars, Import Calendar. I browse. I double-click. I click on Import. And it is now put that event with the time and the links and all the information I would need to attend it into my Google Calendar, right, which is now on my cell phone, on my tablet PC, and my calendar is set up to send me a reminder, right, so it shows up. What if you don't have I didn't use Outlook. I use Google Calendar. It says save it to your Outlook calendar, but it saves it as what's called an ICS file, which is a calendar file. And you just, an iCal file, sometimes called, and you just import that into Google. I did not open Outlook. Okay, but so do you do click on the Outlook one? Right. I use Google Right, and, that, and I just showed you how I, I added it in. Okay. So what you need to do to supplement these excellent classes is you should look at the training program that Keller Williams has and attend them.
right? And you, and so the whole idea of well, how do I use E Edge? If we just go up here, and you go to um, KW groups up here to education, KW Connect, you're going to find that there's a bunch of classes on how to do all these things. All right, so we can talk about that later. I don't want to spend a lot of time, but what I want you to do is to get in the habit of time blocking, putting in educational events, or even if you can't do it at noon, all of these are at noon, even though it says 2 o'clock, that's Texas time, which is noon here, you should time block when you're going to go online and watch the recorded videos. Everything they do, they record, and it's available for you to watch. They've got hundreds. Just Sorry go back to the Google stuff, but when you import that into Google, does it account for the correct time? Yes, it changes it. Google's smart. <laughs> Google knows that this is Central Standard Time and I'm Pacific Time, and it changes the time to match the correct time. And now it's in my calendar. But do you understand how little time it took me if I were to try and type that into my calendar and go find the date and then find the time and then type in the right, you, you understand that? I, that does not take very much time. Yes? I, I'm sorry, I must have been looking down. So that is from that's KW calendar? No, it's what, what most, well, let's, we'll do another one, right? What, mo, most, what most, the, the standard form is what's called an iCal, which is a, um, a, a calendar format, and so you, you go to Google, I mean, you go to My KW, and you want to click on, yeah, you want to go to the, um, you go to technology, and you go to eEdge, and if you go there, this is all the new stuff, it shows you live training, which are the ones that I was clicking on, archived are ones that they've recorded. So I click on live training, and it's going to show me their schedule going way out. So I would pick one, and I would say, I want to go to this one. Click here to register. So I click on it, and it's going to give me a go to meeting form or go to webinar form. And it says it's blocked. It's, I've done it. I, it doesn't like it. I, I, I would have to clear. I'm not going to go through all that. But then, then there's going to, once I've registered, it's going to give me a thank you for registering page, and it has a thing that says add to your Outlook calendar. But what it really is is not an Outlook-specific thing. It's just this little calendar file. And I don't bother changing the date. I just replace the last one I did, import that into the Google Calendar, and it changes the time, and it puts it in my calendar, and it even has the link to the webinar in the calendar, right? So I don't have to go and find it. I just, when I get to that day, I just click on it, and it opens up the webinar for me. I have a website called Network Rainmaker, right? And I have lots of videos on Network Rainmaker. And if you go to that site and you click on Mike's videos, you're going to see extremely long Google Calendar, Google Tasks, and a bunch of other things. Also, if you just Google search Gmail for real estate, one of my webinars ranks, you'll see this short 56-minute one here. And that's where I explain everything you need to know about using Google Gmail in real estate. Right, so I've already I've already done really long classes explaining Google Calendar, Gmail, and a whole bunch of other Google things. All right, uh, all, right this, all right. So, was that I, what I want you to do? Is to just get in the habit of of scheduling your time. The easiest way to do that is on Google Calendar. Right? It's the easiest way to do it. Block when you're going to do things. All right. and we you know we're we, we're going to talk about business plans and things like that a little bit later. All right. Does that um, any questions so far? Can I plunge on to something entirely different? All right. Get your head in the game. This is on page eight point four, eight dash four. This is where the fun starts. You've probably been those of you that started at the beginning of this have been wondering when does the farm fun start? Now is when the fun starts. That's what it says. 
This is the moment you and your buyers have been waiting for. They can't wait to find their dream home and get a deal on it. You can't wait to find them their dream home and get a deal on it and make it all happen as quickly and efficiently as possible. There is a win for you and a win for your customers. And um, would somebody get the front desk? There's uh, anyhow, somebody's, someone's at the front desk ringing. You can turn off your notifications and you can turn down the volume on the side. So the win for you, the more quickly and efficiently you can move through buy, move your buyers through the home finding process, the more contracts you will close, right? That sounds good. And for your customers, the ability to identify and tour the homes as quickly as possible means that your buyers will be able to choose from the best homes on the market, not the leftovers. Um, in our market in particular right now, they should move quickly if they're serious. One of the lines that I've shared with you that I would always ask buyers are, are you serious about buying a home? Because if they say, well, you know, we want to always offer, we heard that you should always offer 20% less than the listed price, <laughs> right? You know, that's what my uncle from, you know, Arkansas tells me that he always does. Um, they're not serious. They're not going to buy a home. Right, you understand? And so you want to move them quickly. And um, that way, people don't like leftovers. Right? What, what, what you don't want them to do is make a decision they're going to later regret. Their home was bought by somebody else. And you're that, saying, well, what's next? That happened with my buyers. They're supposed to see the house this Saturday, but they postponed it regarding right. some their social thing. And yesterday they went to see that house, the same house we're supposed to saw, see on for Saturday. They liked it and they said, go back to office, make an offer on that. And I called the listing agent. It's already pending. Already pending. And they're, they're so sad. They're Sometimes like, people have to be beaten with two by fours <laughs> before they get the idea <laughs> that if, the, if there's one that comes on the market this morning, they need to see it today. Right? If it comes on the market this morning, they need to see it today. And if and, and they need to make an offer, right? right? Not so, what? So she said that they're not taking backup. Offers, they're not taking backup. But offers. if you write an offer, they have to accept, receive it, don't they? Well, I know what you mean by receive it. If you fax it to them, it'll come out of their machine. Yeah. All right. I've had. I've it's it's the, the the I don't want to get into that part right now about backup offers and what the department. You could write a you could complain to the Department of Real Estate, but they don't really care. But if it's a good offer, they're going to go. Well, but I'm just, you go, because they go ahead. Because they like it's pending. Well, the agent is, the listing agent is not smart. Because, it, you know what, on the MLS. Was he one of ours? No, no, no. Okay. As, uh, I did this Coldwell Banker. Oh, well, they, that explains They um, <laughs> didn't mention anything on the MLS thing, like when is the due date of, of the offer, the last date of the offer. So they said, when the offer is coming, we are reviewing. So I said, uh, we have the time. Well, that's, well, we're going to talk when we get to the sellers. As a listing agent, I would always My take another buyers, offer. Yeah. I would always take another offer. But the thing is, is that the buyers, if, let's say the offer that's pending is an all cash, no appraisal investor um, that can close in 10 days, right? And you want to, you know, make it a, a back, they need to move on, mm -hmm. right? So the, the, point is, is, is that in the market we have right now where we don't have as much inventory, they, if it comes on the market this morning, they need to see it today and be prepared to make an offer today right. because this is going to keep happening to them, right. right? And then what happens is they get discouraged and they decide to go away mm -hmm. and take a break from buying a house. Right. And sometimes they don't come back to you. Use as many time-saving techniques as possible to cut down on the hours you'll spend in the home search. Um, I'm going to show you some things that you can do in the MLS uh, a little bit. But um, basically, it means planning how you're going to get to the houses, which order you're going to show them. And um, to leverage every showing. So how long do buyers work? This is from the market navigator of KW. Um, there's also, I think I've, um, in the, showed you the link to the home buying and home selling survey of the National Association of Realtors. So it, it varies, but um, out here right now, it's not this long. But buyers that are motivated are usually going to buy in a couple of weeks. 
2011, which is probably 2010 data, um, it was a lot slower. It was more of a buyer's market. But buyers, um, you, you want to classify your buyers in different levels of motivation. Right? We'll talk about that a little more, more later. Um, you can't beat the averages when Sean Kokoska, mega agent and buyer specialist in Denver, Colorado, was working exclusively as a buyer specialist on the Kokoska team. He showed an average of only 6.3 homes before his buyers made an offer. Um, that's not bad. I, I actually tried to show less than that. By the way, the most that you could, would ever want to show in a day would be five or six. Right. If you show that many, they, they don't remember anymore what the first one looked like. Right. And I'll talk about some ways using new technology that you can make that process easier. One of the keys was setting clear expectations right from the start. He used this script. What I have found is that the average buyer I have worked with looks at six homes before finding one. Now, this might be fewer than what you would expect. Keep in mind that I'm a buyer specialist, which means that my only job is to help my clients find the perfect home. So once I get that picture in my mind of exactly what you're looking for, I should be able to take you right there. And you do want to see the best homes first, don't you? Now, um, you could be a buyer specialist and remove the part that says, which means my only job is to help my clients find the perfect home. Um, I don't know if you need to remove that. You know, in other words, the fact that you're willing to list homes does not mean you're not working as a specialist for that buyer. All right. Now, in Keller Williams, there's a model where there are some agents that only show homes, right? They only work with buyers, and other agents work with listing. This is when teams get bigger. But the the reason that what, what's going on here about setting expectations is, notice he's telling them on average how many homes they should expect to see before they buy one. By the way, in a good market, which we're in right now for the seller, I used to show I used to show them three. All right, and I would tell them that it's probably, you're going to probably buy one of these three. Now, the only way that you can do that well is if you really know and understand what they're looking for and that you've been previewing properties, All right? If you've been previewing properties and you know the market, then it's not hard for you to narrow it down. If you are not previewing properties and you don't know the market, you have to look at everything with them, All right? I'm just saying. All right. Anybody who says, I want to look at 20 homes is not going to buy any of them. Types of buyers. First, it's a person, A, person being relocated. Family is in the residence inn in Sunnyvale. Right? They are looking to buy a home. The corporate relocation department is helping them with costs. They're in a hotel until they buy a home. Right? Do you understand? These people are going to buy. B, are people that aren't under the gun, but are qualified and motivated, and when they find the right home, they're going to buy it. Right? C, are investors who have cash, who, when they find the right deal, are going to buy it, but their motivation is, it has to be a bargain. D, are people you don't want to work with, right? People that want to look at homes but may be really light on the qualifications or light on the motivation, right? So, you, in other words, if somebody says, well, I really don't know, you know, we're really in no hurry, we just sort of like, we used to call them looky-loos, right? We just want to look around and, you know, um, that's not, you should become busy enough that you don't have time for them. Not all of the buyers made an offer after seeing six homes, but because he had established such clear expectation, they would often apologize for blowing his average. Don't worry, I'll do whatever it takes to find you the perfect home, and you can make it up to me by sending me a referral or two. All right? um, do not be afraid to ask for referrals. Plan of action. We're going to learn techniques for qualifying homes you find online, develop showing skills, and practice powerful scripts. You need to start has every everybody's found an accountability partner so far That's, right everybody? Yeah, right, right. Um, 
So what we want you to do is to find an accountability partner and a script partner. All right? I have one, right? An accountability partner. We talk at 8 o'clock every morning. Right? I'm just saying Jeff has one. Renee has one, right? So um, I'm just telling you, right, that this isn't just something we think you ought to do. It's something that we're doing. Is, that the, is there a difference between the accountability partner and your script partner? It can be, okay. right? The script partner is somebody you practice scripts with. Right, we're gonna anyhow. It's somebody that you need to learn the scripts. All right, you need to have an affirmation, which you ought to say, let's say, at breakfast. And we have them for each of the lessons. I contribute to the lives of others through the abundant services I provide. Just saying. Make it happen. The journey from buyer consultation to offer is the most exciting and rewarding part of working with buyers. But keep your eye on the prize. Finding the right home as quickly as possible so you can work with as many buyers as possible. I've had agents come to me and say, well, I don't know. Something seems to be wrong. And I said, what's, what's wrong? They said, well, I've showed them like 100 homes and they haven't bought any. It's been going on for like six months. What's wrong? And, you know. The, the, this was the agent that I suggested that she paint her car yellow, right, taxi on it, right, you understand, because she's driving people around, right, so she probably hasn't qualified them and they're probably not motivated, right, remember, I would ask people, remember we talked last week about qualification scripts, right, and one of the questions I would ask is, just to get, a, you know, when do you plan on bringing your new home? Why are you buying a home now? I'd ask them all those questions. But I would say, just so I get an idea of where you are in the process, let's say today we found your perfect home. We found the right home for you. Are you ready to make an offer today? If we found you the right home today, are you ready to buy it today? All right? And if they say no, you need to talk to them. Why not? Well, because, right, I have a friend who's a contractor and he said he wants to look at it so we're not going to buy anything until he looks like it. That person needs to go with you, all right? If they say, yes, we're ready, right, I'll tell you, it's really nice when they say, no, we're ready. We're ready. Then you say, great, let's go find your new home, right? You're not out looking. You're not showing you're finding them the home they're going to buy, right? Those words make a difference. That attitude makes a difference. Um, I had a client one time who had to have his spiritual advisor in India. Um, no, not, they're serious. Uh, well, it wasn't it. It was someplace. It was, it was feng shui stuff. And um, the spiritual advisor had to bless the transaction. And so we're communicating between him and us, and he says, "Oh well, the stairs are in the road. They go face this." Uh, not, not, we're not so, going in. But what do you do when no. they bring in a? Uh, third That's an inspection. Stuff? They have to make an offer <laughs> subject to inspection. They can have a feng shui inspection. Really? Right. Okay. Why not? The, the, the inspection to the contingency, the property condition contingency period, basically says the buyer can do whatever inspections they want. Right, and I and I've had many people do that. I've had so, but 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 that's that doesn't mean they can't make an offer. It just means they want a, an inspection. Okay, so, right. so find homes. First of all, there's this tech tip. Always search from the IDX search engine on your site. Your website should be a one-stop shop for the buyer's needs. Um, you don't want them to register on another agent's site. This is a good idea, but in a in a perfect world, which we don't have, it would work all the time. But the the point is, is that eEdge, which is a site that you have, has its own IDX search engine. And so it's better to set up searches in it so it's sending out information to your clients rather than using other sites like the MLS, rather than having them sign up at Realtor.com rather than having them sign up at MLSlistings.com, rather than them signing up at Redfin and others. Now, having said that, they're probably going to do it anyhow. Right? They're probably going to do it anyhow. And what, what's going to happen is it's going to be frustrating because they'll call you up. Yahoo's the worst. Because right? Yahoo, and I used to run ads on Yahoo because they'd never take them down. 
And then people would always be calling me about homes that I had listed a year ago. <laughs> right? You know, and I'd always say, no, that one's sold. <laughs> you know? And, and Yahoo won't take them down. Right? Because Yahoo didn't have enough listings. So people are always calling and saying, I saw this house on Yahoo. Well, we want to go see it. And then when you put it in the MLS, it sold two months ago. Right? So you have to educate them on that. So you don't, you want to try and get them to go to your website, that means eEdge, in order to, to get all this information. It is true that the MLS has what are called portals, right? But your branding elements are much more limited on the MLS site. However, there are some things MLS will do that eEdge can't. But I know. Talk about that a little bit. It doesn't usually come up with buyers. Find homes. There are three major, major players in the game of finding a home. You, your buyer, and online property search sites. By the way, it's true Redfin has a better interface right, than anybody. Right? And they, they, people like Redfin. Don't, don't write that down. Send all my clients to Redfin. Right? Um, don't do that. But if they go around, they're gonna, Redfin does some weird stuff. Right? That's all they do is they have a nice website. But the database is exactly the same. You understand that what people are really concerned about is missing a home. This is what I call the fear of buying. Right? The fear of buying is they're going to miss something. That's why they, according to the NAR, they have an average of more than six. It varies from year to year. Six different searches set up with different real estate companies or with other portals. Once you, that means Zillow, truly a realtor.com, the local MLS site, they have a Coldwell Banker, an Intero, a Century 21, a Keller Williams, right? You know, they're going to Rich Fend, and this is what most people are doing, and they get flooded with all this stuff. By the way, what I would do is make sure that I got copies. This is a, a choice, right? You want to get copies, you want to be proactive. Right, you, you understand that you may be thinking, well, obviously they're reading my emails, right? And they saw this one that looks really cool, and they must not like it enough because they haven't called me to go see it. You ought to call them, right? You should assume they're getting a whole lot of email, they're not reading all their email, and they're getting an avalanche of stuff from real estate companies. You should just assume that. So you should call them and say, did you see this one? Searching for homes on the internet works. According to the 2011 National Association of Realtor Statistics, 38% of buyers found their homes through their agents and 37% found them online. Now, what I would, I, I like to point out, I, I would, um, we're better, or you should become better at setting up MLS searches than they are, right? If you if you seen the YouTube channel for our multiple listing service yet, MLSlistings.com. They have a YouTube channel. I subscribe to it. You can look at all of my subscriptions if you go to my channel. Does anybody remember what my YouTube channel is? 24 San Jose. Do you remember that network rainmaker site that I mentioned? Does anybody remember that site? It's got a link to my YouTube channel. On my YouTube channel, I have subscriptions, including the one to the MLS. When the point is, is that you ought to watch some of those videos and participate in MLS trainings. Because if you do, you will be better at setting up searches than the client is. Which means you're going to produce better results. Which means you're more likely to find the home than they will. It's about half and half. Half, you would think they could find it on the internet, but it's not as easy as it may sound. All right? So half of the buyers found their homes from the agent telling them about it, and half found it on the internet themselves. So would a buyer want to be exposed to all the properties they possibly could? Is it true that looking online, they're going to see as many properties as they will having an agent also? No. Right? Is this, now I just want to make sure this point is, I, I just don't want this to get lost. If you've had a meeting with the buyer, a consultation with the buyer, and you know and understand what they're looking for, you can help them find a home that they would not have found on their own. Right? 
Hmm? Isn't that what that, right? Isn't that what that's saying? Also, because agents are also accessing homes through the MLS, you could say that 75% of all of them found their homes online. That means 25% did not. Right now, if you were to Google search the National Association, I, I gave you guys links to the. Right, didn't did Hemi has looked at that folder that I sent him to? Isn't there a copy of the 2011 mm -hmm. Home Buyer, which yeah. is only like 200 and something pages, but um, it'll show you. I used to take some of that and show it to buyers, because it also means that 25 percent did not involve real estate agents or the internet. So, how did they find them? Right? Good question. Um, while there's no doubt that your buyers will be searching the internet on their own, keep this in mind is, well, 48% of buyers want their agent to help them find a home. And they cannot choose between three. It's your job to help identify which ones are actually worth the time to see. This is an important line. Right? So, when my... Remember I gave you a copy of my dialogue on how to get the best buy? That means, first of all, the, the buyer needs to not waste their time looking at properties that do not fit their criteria. Right? And if you're previewing properties, you have the ability to filter out the ones that do not. Right? But you can't afford to do that without a commitment from them. The in-office online search, if you've established your buyer's wants and needs before the buyer consultation, do a search for properties that match there and go over it during the consultation. One, you, if you notice that our meeting rooms, and by the way, this is not true in all real estate offices, in many, the Century 21 group that I came from didn't do this. Notice the big screen monitors, right? The big screen TVs. What that allows you to do is when you're meeting with people is to show, log into the MLS and go through the listings right in front of them. There's sound and you can find virtual tours and play them, right? So you can, they can help you screen out. Also, by the way, when it comes time to write a purchase agreement, you can do that in the office on that screen. So you can sit and talk. Notice that our, we have marker boards a lot of times and big screens, all that stuff. If you establish your buyers and wants and needs during the club, you plug it into the search engine and do it. Basically what this is saying is during your consultation, you ought to go over what's available. Right? You really need to learn how to use the MLS. Right? You need to learn how to use the MLS. Well, you just, there's two ways of doing this. One, you can use what's, what's called an HDMI cable, right? Okay. HDMI. And um, it's a high-definition media interface or something like that, which you can buy at Fry's, and they're not very expensive. We're talking $10. But they have those at the office. They oftentimes have them at the office. Right not necessarily at every office, not necessarily in every room, not necessarily just, I'm just saying I have one, right? <laughs> so uh, I have my own. The other one is that depending, we oftentimes have cables hooked up so you could plug a laptop in. But many agents just go in and there's a keyboard and a mouse and they just log into the MLS, right? And then they just show them right there. And you can print from it and do everything. You don't need a laptop. We have computers connected to all those monitors with, with and, and just and most of them have Microsoft Office on them. Some of them have Office 2010, right, to the most recent version. And so for making flyers and doing other things if you want to. Huh? How about the software? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, there's, you know. All right. Qualify the home you find online. Set the expectations that you're going to narrow it down to the 15 homes closest to what they want using the, the, remember the buyer's questionnaire we talked about. Everybody remembers that, of course. You've memorized it now. Um, you want to ask them about their wants and needs and start doing searches. What I've always found is, is that 
once we start looking at what's on the MLS, they start changing their wants and needs, right? Because what they want, they can't buy for what they can afford, right? I'm just saying, right? You're going to find, and so they'll start looking at other areas, right? Because what will happen is that somebody says, we want to be in Sunnyvale. And then when they see what 800,000 buys you in Sunnyvale, they're like going, oh my God, that's not very nice. And then you say, well, for what you can afford, let's move a little, let's go to Santa Clara. Oh, all of a sudden it just popped up a lot more nicer homes. Let's, how about Mountain View? Oh, wow, it's even getting better, right? You, you understand? So sometimes I used to have people, I would narrow down the neighborhoods that I thought and would give them an assignment to drive around the neighborhoods because sometimes they're all, like all over the place, right? And so, and, and take notes and pick out the neighborhoods they like the best. Right? But this can be a, a time-consuming process. It'll take, but what we're trying to do is... Um, no, you get the idea. You, you, for example, there are inferior homes with a formal dining room, but 38 to choose from without one. Once they have seen this for themselves, refining what they want becomes clearer. I've had people say, we want the laundry inside, not in the garage. <laughs> All right. Um, you understand that that means that the home has to be built within a certain time frame. Right? Because before that, they almost all had them in the garage. And all of a sudden, the price point just jumps, right? So then they say, wow, uh, maybe that's not that important, right? Did you remember what I was saying last, when, when was the last time we talked? The, that, that, that they, you want to expand and not narrow, right? And so sometimes you have to actually show them on the screen what they can get. Print the MLS uh, pages for the 15 finalists from the computer and get ready to compare apples to apples. Together, identify. So I would print them out and show them to people. Um, and then you, you try to focus on the best homes. When we do find the right home, we'll need to act quickly. And I know you're going to have that feeling of, well, is there something better out there? But I have to tell you, the best homes sell right away because they're the best homes. Everything else is just a leftover. I want to make sure that you are not stuck with the leftovers. Do you want to see all the homes or do you want to find the right one quickly? Right. Especially in this market. Um, let's see, that two, four, six, right. We have an even number. So what I would like to do, we're going to do a role play. Doesn't that sound like fun? Um, I just got back from Bold yesterday where we, we, we were spending a lot of time doing this. So um, there's an even number of people today, so this is going to make it easier. And we're going to practice saying these words. Um, and so you should, one of you will play the buyer. Let me see what this is going. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't know if we can do this one. This one requires that you have access to the MLS. This is going to be a, um, you need to have an accountability partner and a script partner, and you need to practice on this. This one requires that you put it into the MLS. What I'm going to show you is, well, I'm going to do a quick run through about doing an MLS search. Is that all right? We'll just do a quick one. And, but I've mentioned that you can find training. By the way, this is the MLS login. And one of the things you're going to notice, can you see that? It's right here. It's, I know it's on the training. the training part. Let me see if I pull it down. Uh, 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 uh. How about this, control minus. All right, this is not working. So what um, what's happened up here, let me just get it right. Okay. See that button? Yeah. Training. This is for the MLS. And if you click on that, what you're going to find is they have recorded webinars. They have videos, 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 videos. Accessing map search, watching videos, 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 and videos. Right? Most of these are on their YouTube. 
And what I've done is I, I subscribe to their YouTube channel, which means every time they post a new video, I get something that says, hey, they posted a new video, right? So you don't have to go here and keep looking to see if they have anything new. And so you're going to want to time, look at these, you're going to want to time block when you're going to watch some of these. All right? Just, just saying. So let's do a, a simple search. I don't know if anybody, does anybody have, how, do you have something? Oh, they logged me out. Isn't that wonderful? Wasn't something? I just, yeah. just a second. Okay. You have to do it. And so it logs, it, they, they've made it really annoying now. <laughs> All right, so just a second, let me log back in. And I am going to change my password because I know what you people are like. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. You're gonna. Who, who should we uh, choose for an accountability partner? Are there any qualifications that we should look for? Somebody that's accountable. <laughs> um, Can we choose you? Pardon me? Can we choose you? Somebody that's more wise than we are. You, you, all of you are going to be on my coaching schedule. So, um, which is, we're, we're going to do some of this. But um, um, you ought to pick somebody else, too, because I'm not. Can I'm, we choose Jay? Yeah, we should ask him. I think he's going to suggest somebody else. You ought to choose somebody, you ought to choose somebody else. Do you want me to make recommendations? Want me to just... Uh, all right. When we meet the next time we meet individually, I'll, I'll give you some suggestions. All right. But what you want to do is choose somebody who's not negative, not complaining, not whining. All right. That's just going to narrow it down. All right. If you find somebody that's always whining and complaining, do not choose them. I'm not a great complainer. All right. I'm not sure I'd be a good accountability partner. I need somebody strong. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Were you volunteering? On the accountability partner? You could, you could, Jennifer could be your, if you, yeah, she would. She'd do it. She'd be good. All right. So let's do a search. And, and Charmilla has a real one. By the way, if you've never looked at this, this stuff on the other side, um, beware, but these are searching other places outside of our area, right? I never would do this. If it involved me going to Barris, which is the Bay Area Real Estate Information Service, if it involved me going to these, I didn't do it. I referred it to somebody, right? Because I didn't want to bother. I'd, I'd get a referral fee, but I didn't want to drive to San Francisco. Right? That's the San Francisco Association of Realtors, MLS. I didn't want to do that. I didn't mind going to San Francisco to do stuff. I didn't want to go there to show homes. Right? You oftentimes need a different lockbox key. MetroList, which is the Sacramento area, requires a different lockbox key. It's a pain. I'm just telling you. Right? And, um, but So we're going to do... Um, you need to re to learn what RPR is and to uh, activate that. All right, so let's do a search. We're going to go to matrix search. RPR. So RPR stands for the Realtor's Property Resource. And there's videos on it. There's actually a video I've made that's out there someplace. And I might do a class on that. I might do an MLS. But Ma matrix has a whole bunch of videos. There's less on the realtor property resource. All right, so we're going to do a search. Do you have one? Yeah, I have to actually. I have to show, show today. Just give me, let's, we're going to, we'll do one. It's, yeah, so you're going to look into All right, now is it a single family or a condo single town? Single family and price will be 700K. All right, maximum. Maximum, yeah. So what we're doing is we're looking at, um, the list price 
you know, how, how far, if you just put as the maximum 700K, what if it's a little over? 710. Would they take that? Would they look at it? How about 712? Maybe 715? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. 720 if it was really, really nice. Right? Really, really nice. Right? 725 if the seller uh, helped him with closing costs. 750, 750. Well, no, but I've lost, I've lost clients because they said this is it, and I didn't show them anything over that, and somebody else did. The houses get better as you go up in price, right? And whoever shows them the nicest house they can afford, that's usually what they buy. Should I say that again? The agent who shows them the nicest house that they can afford is the one that they usually buy. Right. So we want to show them the nicest house they can afford. So I would say, seven. Is it possible that they could offer less than the seven twenty-five? Right. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So what you want to do? Uh, let me, this is going to be hard because it does all this. So does anybody? How do we? Do, uh, this is a seven hundred. How do you do or m less? You know. Less and minus. Do you put the plus first or the minus first? The minus first. First? <coughs> 725 and less, right? <coughs> so. All right. So 700,000. Um, what I would do, first of all, is in, in Santa Clara, is this where we're looking? Santa Clara right. and Milpitas. And Milpitas. All right. So uh, sometimes it takes a, a couple of tries. So we're going to do single family home. We want. Um, these are the pendings, right? Now, uh, the, I would do it, but um, we'll see. And then area, and by the way, you have to hit this clear button in order to get it to go away, and then it sometimes comes back. Do you know what the areas are? Are we doing it by the cities? Cities. Okay, so let's click on city, and you click on this little box, and when you click on that box, a pop-up comes, and home counties... And we're going to go to Santa Clara, and we're going to pick uh, Santa Clara, and we're going to pick Milpitas, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Not Fremont? No. Sure? Because, uh, his Newark. Is Newark. 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 <laughs> All right. Just wanted to miss. All right. Okay. Because there is nothing. Well, uh, nothing for 725. Oh. All right. Is that right? What I would, what I used to do was, because I wouldn't want to show them six, let's say 600 to 725. Say the 37 matches. All right. So let's try, what other things do they want? Bedrooms? Four bedrooms, two bathrooms. They can't, what if there, what if there were three? <laughs> no. no way. It's four bedrooms. All right. So now we're down to 37 and how many full baths? Two. Two. Or more, right? Yeah. Do they garden? Do they like landscaping? One big yard? Eight. We're down down to eighteen. What else? Uh, yeah. Mm, well, let's. If we, the square foot is what's going to kill it. Yeah. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred plus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Fifteen. All right. That a fifteen hundred four bedroom is a small. Small bedrooms, small bedrooms, but all right. So um, any, so the, the, what I might do here is say, well, let's say six fifty to seven twenty five seven. Okay, six fifty to seven twenty five. There's seven. Now we're getting close, right? And so you can map it from here. You can you can just look at the results. Now, the advanced search is where you could ha add or remove other criteria. By the way, one of the things that I would do at this point is I would just go and see active. There's three, right? So the other four are pending with release, pending show. Now, as a listing agent, I always would say pending, continue to show until all the contingencies have been removed. Right? You never know. They don't always get removed, right? It doesn't, don't always, right? And I would take backup offers because I've had them not close. That's 
right? So, um, but, but you, you, you want to just know this. Three of them are active. Now, the, we, one of the things that I've added someplace, um, let's say you wanted to add a field, right? And, and this is mine and Mike's. So if you want to add a field, what you do is it says click here to add or remove other search fields. And if you click on this, because people will say to me, well, where's the pool? Well, we don't want a pool, right? You know, well, you have to go through this list, and it's not necessarily intuitive. One of the fields that I've always gotten a lot of use out of, and I would just recommend that you add, is something called status change date. All right? And what status change date allows me to do, this will become more useful when we're doing something with sellers, because it allows me to say, I want only to see things that have changed from a certain date, right? Anyhow, so what we would then do is we could either look at a map and, and or look at the results. So if we click, click on results, it's going to show us this list. Now, um, notice um, Mike has done some things to change what the display is. Right, because I'm logged in as his assistant right now. But what you should do, the first thing you want to do with Matrix, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to where it's called My Matrix. And then you want to go through Settings, My Matrix and Settings. Notice our broker, because he doesn't probably care about it, hasn't set up his email signature. That means you should put in your name, your phone number, DRE number, anything that you would normally put in the signature. So if you send to somebody an email from the MLS, it's there. Header and footer is something you're going to want to set up because it'll when people if you they if you do use the MLS and they go to it, they're going to want to see your name and your picture and your phone number. So notice n n this is how most it has uploaded an image or I choose not to. I don't know if he's uploaded an image. I'm not going to mess with it. But there's a button that says you can pick one of these. You could upload an image and it says set my information. And there's um, he's got it for a custom one. So you're going to want to you're going to want to when you click on um, here, I'll just show you. I'll pick this one and we go down here and say set my information and it's going to ask for pictures and then here's where all of your information and this was this is what when a matrix uses something called a portal system so when somebody clicks on the listing they see this page with your stuff on it you want to put in this information and maybe add your photo all right the other things as we're going through settings we're going to my metrics and settings Speed bar shortcuts I'm not going to get into. Custom displays, because sometimes what people will say to me is, I don't like the way this looks. I, I want, for example, what's missing here? Age is missing, right? right? So the age of the house isn't here, and I don't like it because it doesn't have the age of the house. And I don't need to know the law. You know, I mean, the, and if I know, so where would you change that? Well, this is the drop-down list of the different things you could change. And if you go to the settings under matrix, under custom displays, you can come up with your own list of what you want when you see it. And then this is a way to export it. All right, so, but, but I, I usually didn't mess with this, but you could look at it. Um, these little icons mean that there's a virtual tour, mm -hmm. right? This means that they have pictures. This means that there is a map. This shows the status. A is active. PS is pending show, pending show, active, pending release. Pending release means that somebody's made an offer and there's a release clause, usually 72 hour release clause, which means they probably have to sell their home in order to buy this home. So if you came in with an offer, that one, by the way, is easier to get. Right? Do you understand? Because the, the buyer that they've accepted has 72 hours to release that contingency and prove they can afford to buy the house without selling their home. All right? So this shows you that information. These little symbols, short sales, short sales and REOs, 
right? Most of them are not. That's true in our market. There, here are the MLS numbers. And if you click on this, this allows you, notice when I click on this, it allows me to email, to print, to do a CMA, to do directions, right? Um, and statistics and to export it into an Excel spreadsheet type format. So um, if you want to look at them, for example, if you did this, and you went up here and you said, I want to see agent full. What this is what, and usually we would do agent. If you, if you were in the room with people, you would want to do client full probably. And the client full is there are, there's secret information on line four of the comments that only agents are supposed to see. All right. You know, things like, $5,000 bonus to the selling agent if you can, you know, sell it at the full price. I mean, you know, I mean, so you, you don't want to show them that, right? But you might want to read it yourself. It also, it shows your commission on the agent full, but not on this. What does it mean that 2004 paid vendor unverified? Where? Is that square feet? Where are we? Right, there. right here. Okay. Uh, unverified approximate square footage. When, when you see something like that, it means that they've hired somebody to uh, measure the house. And that unverified means that the agent has not done it themselves. So, um, by the way, this, this is a little wonky. Right? Different people, you would think they would come up with the same number. But appraisers, you get three appraisals, you can get three different numbers, right? They don't always agree on how big the house is, right? right? Or how to measure it, right? They don't necessarily agree. Plus, the tax assessor probably has a totally different number, which the owner didn't like. Owners will say, well, that's not true. Now, when I bought the house, I was told that it was 4,000 square feet. How dare you say that so it's only... You can only... change it, but you have to qualify it. Right, so you can manually put in a different number than what the tax records say, but they're going. To, but the MLS wants the listing agent to say, "How did you get this? Where did it come from?" Right. All right. So, um, any other questions? As we're looking at this, this shows you. By the way, just to look at this. So, it, there's a little map. There's a picture of the house. You know, and notice it says there are 22 pictures. Right. So, right. So you can just and you can click on this to make it larger. And you can open them all at once, and you can, you know, this goes to the end. And, um, yeah, you get that one. And so the step, this is a good thing to look at here, right? The original price, first of all, it's an active status. Original price was 649 The list price is 714 Right. But, and so, but, but they had it on the market for 649.9. At one time, this is a bank-owned property, right? REO, and so the banks changed their mind. It's been on the market 35 days, however, mm -hmm. which is a long, which is eternity in this market. So they raised the price rather than lowering the price. Right, Smart. right. But um, one of the things that you can do is look at the history. This is always a good thing to look at, right? I would always click on this and take a peek and show it to them, because. Um, powerful agents, real estate services. So you start to go through the last real sale was made back in 2006 for 590, right? And then they in uh, then there was um, that was a real sale, and then um, this was a pending, and then this was it was a uh, uh, new value. Uh, List of price. What is this PN? It is for PN for pending? Pending, yeah. Pending no show. Pending. PS is pending show. PR is pending release. Okay. Right. You understand? You need to learn. Uh, so we, if we look at the recent one, so is it useful to know what it, they started at and where they are now? Right. And so we know that then you look at the more recent ones. So they started on the 20th of September. They made it active, mm -hmm. all right? And you can click on it. Um, it was listed at 649. Mm -hmm. It was pending, and it didn't go through, right? Pending no show. Mm -hmm. 
and why it didn't go through maybe that the um, that the lender decided they wanted more and it went and by the way one of the things that you can do if you click on this let's say we look we're, uh, let me see features property history click on arrow for photos um, one of the things if we go back let me just I'm trying to look there and look here if we go back to our list one of the things that you can you'll see over on the far right you see this TX that doesn't stand for Texas right that it means those are the tax records so and what this is is an a watched list so if you set that up it means it'll notify you if statuses have changed on this property view property history is right there but if we click on the tax records what it's going to do we actually could probably this is real list which is another program you're going to need to be familiar with its property tax assessment is 882 uh, land is uh, you know uh, that's the total and what we're looking for here's the history recording sales price buyer name Wells Fargo Northwest trustee mortgage history uh, this is the problem here there's a seven hundred and twenty eight thousand dollar on two thousand and seven and right so they th this is what the this is the problem right right the, it's way over right that's the problem so you do understand why you'd want to if you were uh, an agent you'd want to look at all this and be familiar with that property so you can explain to the clients the issue is is that it's like an eight hundred thousand dollars in loans now the, forget the second right the second isn't going to get much but they're not going to come close to paying off the first the second is with the same bank Right, you understand? So they're still looking at eight hundred thousand dollars on this property that they're owed, and they would probably and they see that the market is rising, right? So they've risen, they've raised the price. So um, that means that this one it may not come. But but do you understand how you need to look at these? I I would pay real close attention to the ones that are active. The, and the pending release. So again, this one it shows us, you know, where it is on the map. We click on it. So that's a beautiful. It's a, not a bad little area, actually. It's yeah, it's a nice area. Um, the commission is uh, two and a half percent. Which, which, this is an agent display. I'm doing agent full. So if you were, sh by the way, I always start with this because you you want to sort of know <laughs> that it's two and a half percent standard. What that means is that there isn't some weird price range commission thing, right? Where if it's above this amount, you get, you know, sometimes they have weird things. Um, so you read about it, occupied by great tenants until March. So w let's take a look. This one was um, listed on 918. Um, it goes into 2013. So they have occupied by tenants. Uh, that's an issue, right? Um, Six ninety nine days on market thirty seven. The problem with that is that it's hard to see usually, right? Instructions: No key safe. Do not disturb documents. Make offer subject to inspection. Oh, you can't see the bikes, so. Right. By the way, this is something you'd share with sellers, right? Because there are sellers that are going to want that. Well, we don't want people just coming in any time, right? Right, I've told people get the tenants out, right? If they're on month to month, give them a notice today that they have to leave in 30 days. And they're like, well, no, we're going to lose, you know, rent. You're going to lose way more than that in the selling price. Don't most uh, uh, rental agreements uh, have a clause that require the? Yeah, if you give notice, how how much notice do you have to give? Right, you have to give them like 72 hours, 24 hours to um, to do an inspection, 72 hours, I believe, to show the property. And are they going to keep it clean? No. Are they going to make it nice? No. Do they want the house to be sold? No. No. Are they going to be nice to the people when they're there? Are they going to put their dog away? 
right? Are they going to move their children out? No, no. Is the place going to, uh, yeah, no, no, they're not going to do any of that stuff, right? They're not, they're not going to cooperate, right? So if you represent a seller, sellers say, well, I don't want them to stop paying rent, you know, because they're paying so much rent, that you're going to lose thousands and thousands of dollars because your property can't be shown and people can't, if they can't see it, they can't buy it, right? So this has been on the market for 35 days when it might have sold in five, right? When it might have sold in five. Now, we don't know. They may have a, a fixed-term lease, but, but you, you, does everybody see what I'm doing is I'm actually reading this, right? And then you're going to, you, I always like to look at the history because even if you don't know much, right, even if you're brand new, if you read the history, and then when you're showing them on the screen, you show them the client, the short version of the clients, and then you're adding all this information. You're saying, well, this was originally a short sale, and they've had it on the market several times. You understand, and you're talking about the history. They think you've been around for the last 10 years watching the real estate market, right? Right? Yeah. Just a quick question on the property history there. Yeah. It doesn't go back any further than... It, so. Look at the age of the building. It's uh, where is that? The new property recently built. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was on the last page. It's forty-two. Oh, it? It's forty-two years old. Nineteen seventy. Yeah, I don't see where that is. I've lost it. Right there. Nineteen seventy-four. Yeah. All right. So the, the the multiple listing service only goes back about seven years, right? And that so they just cut it off, just because um, the title records can go back further, right? So if you go to Realist, you can get, pull up there the title company's history and see, right? But it could be that somebody bought it brand new and they stayed there all that time. Probably not. The title, the MLS only goes back seven years, right? Because it's big and they just don't want to keep the data forever. Right? We, we did that. We, we bought our house in 1967 and we're still there. <laughs> we're still there. All right. And um, <laughs> also, subject to a 1031 tax exchange, right? All right. Now, that doesn't, does that affect the buyer negatively? No. No, it doesn't. No. All it means is the buyer has to sign some papers and agree to cooperate with the intermediary. Yeah. doesn't affect the buyer. But you understand how there's a lot of stuff here, mm -hmm. right? Isn't there? Oh, there's a lot of stuff. So you're going to want to read it. You can print it out. You can, a CMA, if you, if you, if you, um, let, let me go back to the original results. Um, let's see, go to all. Come on. If you do a CMA, sometimes this just shows you. No, I'm not going to do this. Now. I'll wait for the seller's one. Um, um, all right. So you, you can do directions. If you click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up a map. And um, everybody should have GPS now. Even if you don't have it in your car, your phone probably does. But what it allows you to do, you can move things up and down. They have videos on this so that you can actually come up with a showing schedule. Now, some questions about that. Let me just, so there's more about the online search. What I want to do, um, a note on distressed properties. There's a um, shift tactic 11. We're, we have a lot less of them. By the way, something you ought to know how to do. Let's just go over here to single family residential. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on clear and I'm going to click on active and I'm going to do for county SCC for Santa Clara and let's say single family homes and uh, it's really hard because it's made it smaller. Where is they used to have a button right at the top that said if it was bank owned or not, uh, REOs. I think it, it's made it smaller because I've. Is it would it be under hot sheet? Or, or well, it, it, not really. But what we want to do is 
they they used to just have it up here that they may have moved it because of the criteria what you would do i have a feeling uh, additional information now if that doesn't appear what somebody's already done on this one is they've clicked add and they clicked on additional information if we say reo bank owned property and we come back up 20. all right if we unclick that uh or let's say we go to short sale lender approval 77 all right and if we um uh, how do I remove it? And that's in Santa Clara County. Correct? Right. Okay. Right. Which means there's very few. Yeah. So what I always used to do, it's a clear SCC it's active. Just, that's under screen. Isn't that the screen? I was doing that to see if you're paying attention. Thank you. Good. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure you're not, you know. So what I used to do, and I would do a, a numbers, is I would write down that number, 1393. See, now it's hardly... How, are, how many of them are bank owned now? And the short sales, hardly any, right? Isn't that what? But those are things you just need to know. All right, let's keep, let's keep, let's plow ahead. All right, so um, I'm not going to spend time about REOs and short sales. People think that if it's a bank owned property, they're going to get a steal, right? And I used to say to people, have you ever tried talking to your bank about a problem? Right? How cooperative were they? How how easy did they give in? Right? And they all know they weren't cooperative. Guess what? Right? I've seen them sit on REOs for years waiting for the market to pick up. Right? Because they wanted to get their money back. Show homes. Set the home tour date for your buyers. Time permitting preview and eliminate any that do not meet their criteria. Um, determine. It's very, I would preview the homes before you show them the more you show homes without previewing them the less happy you're going to be i'm just telling you right you you'll get lost getting there there'll be they'll say well we went in a quiet neighborhood and you'll figure out that it's next to the railroad tracks once you're there right and, and when you're there is when a train's going by and the place is shaking and they're looking at you like you're an idiot because they had definitely wanted something quiet and there you um determine which route to take showing them the best homes first there are different theories about this right um the there's the show them the best homes last and show them the best homes first are the two theories um the advantage of showing them the best homes first is is that we can stick with that. We'll show them the best homes first, right? Because And you may have to bring them back to the first one, right? I used to, I'm just, even though this is not what the material says, I used to show the best ones last. So that each time I would start with the worst one. And they'd go, oh, my God, you know. And then the next one got better, and they're, oh, this is bad. And I'd go, oh, this is bad. Here, and now, wow, this is it, right? Do you understand? Um, but it works the other way around, too. Right, where they're they're like, oh, okay, this isn't bad. And they go, ooh, that one, right. Did you ever track your success rate? Um, I had taken a seminar that said show the worst ones last, I mean the worst ones first, and I just almost always did that. Call the sellers a day before to uh, arrange your route and to, to, to confirm that you're doing it. By me, I would meet the buyers at the office if, if at all possible especially in this market because things might have come on the market or gone off the market determine the most efficient route to take yes and no right and by yes and no i mean sometimes i would take not the most efficient route sometimes the most efficient route took you through things that you didn't want them to pay too much attention to right sometimes i would take a route that showed them the park Right, even if that's not the most efficient route. If they were interested in public transportation and there was the light rail station, I would take them on a route that would show them where that is. Right? So certain kinds of recreational amenities or other things that are in the neighborhood. If there's something nice. I had a guy from Google and they wanted to be walking distance from a coffee shop and it had to be Pete's. <laughs> Not kidding. Pete, this was after Google did an IPO and the guy had the money. And I said, don't worry. We'll, sure. 
And I found him one way, and, I, and I, the first thing I did on the way to the house is I showed him where Pete's was. Right? And they were like, oh, all right. I mean, this was, this was a have to, not Starbucks. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. Had to be Pete's. So do you understand it's not always the straight line, right? You might want, if the straight line takes you through a bad neighborhood, you might skip it. All right. Print out two detailed MLS for each plan. You sure, what I always would do, the, the reason for two, by the way, is to give the husband and wife one. All right. I've seen them fight. All right. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I used to have it one clipboard, and I watched them argue for 10 minutes, and they were snatching it from each other and argue, you know. And so then I would give, after that, I gave everybody their own clipboard. All right. Your own one. All right. And then they hit each other. Yeah, well... <laughs> Almost. And what you want to do is you want to be carrying not only a copy of what they have, but a, the complete everything printout with the history and everything. All right? So that you can talk about it. And I would take a highlighter and I'd go through and highlight things. Place the information sheets in the order and include a home tour checklist, which is part of the materials you have. If you don't know where it is, it's a free download under KW, under the... the Make a copy of the five must-haves that would be filled out by the buyer consultation and give it to them sort of as a reminder, but um, sometimes they, they start to ignore it. And then here's the home tour checklist where they can, you know, talk about, uh, you know, they can check off things. Um, by the way, one of the, a tech tip, you don't want a tech tip? There's a free download of a program called Evernote, E-V-E-R-N-O-T-E, -E. Evernote. It's a cool program. I, I did a class once on Evernote. I don't know where that one is, but it's not that complicated. Uh, Evernote is a note-taking program, but on steroids. It will work on a cell phone. I have it on my smartphone. It'll work on a tablet PC. And Evernote allows you to do such things as to, let's say, you can, you can create a note, which would be a folder. By the way, my Evernote program, I went to a seminar the other night. Yesterday I was in Bolt, right? It was a class. My Google Calendar says I'm in Bolt. While I'm there, my tablet PC knows where I am, and it knows what time it is. And Evernote has a record audio button, and you click it, and it'll start recording what the person is saying, right? So I'm not, you know, taking handwritten notes as often. And it knows, it stamps it as a recording of the bold session that I was at. It already knows that I was there. Oh, it's you can hear it's not perfect, but it, this is from speakers. I did it at Mega Camp, which were great big speakers, and uh, Gary Keller wasn't wasn't really loud, but he was clear enough you can understand what he's saying. Standing in front with people, you can you can record things, you can take pictures. So the idea is that you can create a folder for each listing, and you can take pictures, record comments and store them all in that folder so that later you could pull it up when you're saying, what, what, what about that one? Remember, and you could play it back to them. I would explain to people that you're doing this. If you're saying, well, that sounds really complicated, how would I ever use Evernote? So we type in Evernote tutorial in a Google search. All right, Evernote tutorial 2012. And if you like videos, which I like, and you click on videos, you're going to see video after video after video on how to use Evernote. I wonder if there's an Evernote for real estate. And I put that in, and here are how real estate agents can benefit from Evernote, Evernote tech tutorial, Evernote, Evernote, Evernote. Right? And these people are talking about Evernote tutorials for real estate. Right? And this is a free, now Evernote has a, and by the way, it'll synchronize on the net. It uploaded my long audio files, which I could download at a computer someplace else or play from anywhere I was logged into the internet. Hmm? Can it go into your phone too? Yes, it's on my phone. Evernote's on my phone. But yes. I was going to say, I use it too. It's a pretty good program, so yeah. I co-sign. Yeah. 
It's a, it, it, this is, you, you need, um, K, if you watch those KW webinars, they go through different apps that you ought to have. And this one is really good for showing homes. It's good for a lot of things. But I'm just, just saying, right? Audio, take pictures, you go in there, you can take photos right into Evernote, you could type notes, you could import MLS sheets into them, PDF files. All right. Create excitement and urgency. You might buy the first home you see. Don't be surprised if the very first home is the one you want to buy. It's because you've given me a really good picture of what you're looking for. And if they correct me, then I should be able to take you right to it. And we do want to see the very best homes first, right? Uh, so, in other words, you should, you should um, condition them that they're going to buy a home. All right? Show your buyers that the market is moving. You ought to share with them statistical information. Um, you, giving them private time if they, if they sometimes that's, a, that's not a bad idea. Tour the home. Ring the doorbell even if at home has a lockbox. Ring it at least twice. Shout hello, a real estate agent, a few times. Yes, yes I don't know. If, if, both of us probably have stories about what you can find. Uh, if you don't announce yourself, right? So you want to you enter, you want to call first, right? We're coming by. Make your times approximate, because what will happen is on the way to one, they're going to say, "Well, you know, we've been thinking we really don't need to see this one. Let's go to the next." That's by the way one of the problems with printing out the MLS. We're going directions, right? Because it says you go from this one to that one to that one, and then they take one out, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Can we just drive to it so I know how to get to the next one, right? <laughs> so if you have a smart, if you don't have a smartphone, you need to have a smartphone, right? And they all have navigation and GPS, so you can change routes if you need to. But make it approximate. Don't say we're going to be there at 8.15 or, 9, or you know, 2 o'clock. Because I would say 1.30 to 2.30, right? Because they might take more time, less time, skip some, right? Do you understand? Lao Tzu said the plan rarely, the battle plan rarely survives contact with the enemy, right? So as soon as you're out driving them around, things are going to happen. Record your comments on your copy of the MLS sheet for each property as you show it, or use Evernote, right? It's good to have these files. You can share your Evernote files with them afterwards. Have your buyers give descriptive names. The Creek House, the Fountain House, the Great View House, the Smelly Cat House. I don't think by Cat House they mean what some of you are thinking, but, but a house with cats in it. Um, avoid, notice while touring, avoid making comments. This is a big mistake that agents sometimes make. They think of themselves as a tour guide, right? So you're, you say, well, here we are, you know, and you, here's the living room. And, you know, they're thinking, wow, you know, I can, I can see why you need a, a license to do this, right? You know, here's the kitchen, right? Wow, this guy must have scored high on his test of the DRE, right? You know, he can, right? Do you understand? You're not supposed to lead and talk. You're supposed to follow and listen. And what you're following, you want them to sort of walk through the house with you there. What, what you're looking for are what are called buyer signs. You're watching their faces, their movement, their actions, and listening to their comments until you see signs that they like it. All right? What, some of the signs that they might make that they like it is talking about where they're going to place furniture is kind of an obvious one. Pace, I've had people pace out on a floor. I used to carry, I mentioned this, I'm sure, I know that there are probably apps for it. I have to look. But um, I used to have this little sonic measuring thing, right? You put it against one wall. I'm sure they have apps now. I know they do for the iMac. I haven't looked for my Android yet. All right, fine. But you put it against the wall and it would hit a beam and it would tell you exactly how wide that room was, right? Because people say, how wide do you think this? And they'd start arguing, right? That's why I went and bought one, right? Because they would argue. Um, Which one did you buy? 
Oh, that one's probably, I bet there's an app for it. I'll bet there's an app for it. Or you put the phone against the wall and it takes a picture and tells you how far away it is. I know that they have them for the uh, iPhones. But you can, if you go to the Santa Clara County Association of Realtors as a store, did you know that? And have you been to the orientation yet? No, they're, they're gonna, you're going to have to go. They have a store. You can go shopping and they sell them all there, right? They sell these little sunny things. That's where I got mine. So avoid making comments. Let them come to their own conclusions. What, and, and if they, if they don't like something, if they go, oh, carpet is horrible, you know, um, what kind of carpet would you like? If, if, if you owned the place, what would you do to it? Right? Do you understand the fact that they have complaints doesn't mean they don't want to buy it. The backyard is trashed. They say, gosh, the backyard is trashed. What would you, if this were yours, what would you do with the backyard? Well, I think we put a garden over there. You know, I have a little gazebo over here, and we have sand with it, right? You, you, mm, 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 right, right, you understand? So they have, to, I, I would tell people to try to envision the house empty, without furniture. And without wallpaper, one house I remember showing, it had pink flocked wallpaper, right? The bathroom and kitchen had pink flocked wallpaper. And I stopped before I went in and I said, now, remember I've been telling you to try to visualize the house, you know, completely empty with no colors on the wall. This is going to be a challenge, right? <laughs> this, I really mean it, right? Can we rip off that wallpaper? No, yeah, right? Could they take up the carpets, put down hardwood floor, right? You, you understand these are not deal killing issues and you want, and don't make comments. I, I remember I told you one about the snake, the, 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 the iguana, right? And I was thinking this is a horrible place. And I almost said, boy, this, this place is horrible. But instead I asked, you know, what do you think? And they said, we want to make an offer, right? So you're not going to live there. They right. <laughs> so what would you change about this house? Everything. Right. Well, sometimes they can. Help buyers identify the perfect home by pointing out the benefits, not the features that align with the needs, wants, and values. Features are attached to the property. Benefits are attached to the buyer. That's probably a, a, one of the better explanations I've seen. New windows means lower utility bills you'll have less expenses, more money. All right. Um, so what we're, we're now going to do, we're, we're all going to do a stop and do. Doesn't that sound like fun? We're getting, so we have, do we, we don't have an even number anymore. I'll have to, I'll have to be somebody's partner. So we're going to point out benefits, not the features. With the partner, use the chart on the next page to list one common home feature you might want a buyer to notice. For example, new roof fireplace, list the benefits of that feature, stand up and read off the benefits of the feature you listed without naming it. Um, oh, that's, are we doing this with a partner? Use the charts on the next page. All right, well, why don't we, we'll do the first part. I, I remember this one now. So if, if, if we, we, we don't, it doesn't have to be two. It could be three people. And the idea is they gave you an example. A large backyard with the benefits are. So the point is, is that you're going to come up with a couple at least, maybe three. If there's three, each of you, maybe one. This will just be fun of a feature. New roof, new windows, pergo floors, right? Remodeled kitchen, bathroom, right? Do you understand if you, I, I just threw those out in case you were stuck on that part, right? New carpet, new landscaping, new driveway, right? Yes. Can't have them. Has to be gas. What? I'm just kidding. I, I don't know what the what you mean by the rules about, about burning logs in yeah. a fireplace. There's fire. There's um. There's the day, the um, save the air day that you just call and then you. Yeah, I, I don't know. But if you remodel, I would I I would Google search that. Okay. I just remodeled the house. Yeah. And in, in Santa Clara County, if you remodel a house, you're required to put in. No, but I would Google search that. It probably varies. 
by the county. I didn't know. I don't know. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I just told her everything's gas, but so you go history on MLS. If it's old, then you have to make sure all the fire place and gas. No, I don't believe that if you sell the house, they force you to convert it. I think that if you build a new house or remodel, you're have, you're supposed to put in gas, because um, and there are, by the way, benefits to not having a fireplace, in terms of utility bills and things like that. But um, it's not as popular as it used to be. A lot of people, you know, like the gas ones. Because but the standard inspection doesn't talk about it, right? A standard inspection, a property inspector is going to look at the fireplace. Absolutely, and they're going to tell you whether or not it's a gas flog, and they're going to, and they're, they're not going to. I would always get a what's called a chimney inspection, um, and have somebody that looks because the property inspector doesn't really do a good job with chimneys. One way you can tell the chim uh, property inspectors wear clean clothes, right? They have clean uniforms with their name on them, and that sort of thing. The chimney guy does not look clean, right? The chimney guy goes up on top and goes down the chimney. They usually have these special overalls that come up to here, right? And they do not look clean, right? And so which one does a better inspection, do you think, right? Yeah, you really want the chimney. You want a chimney inspection, right? To have a chimney rebuilt is $3,500, $5,000, easy in an old property. All right, so does everybody understand what we're going to do? The idea is to come up with a, a feature and then you don't have to, what would be the benefits to somebody to having this feature, right? Rather than just, you understand, rather than just saying, well, there's a large backyard, what would be the benefits? Just take a couple of minutes to do that, all right? And do you need me to pair people up? There's you two, you two, you three.
All right, how are we doing? All right, let's see how did we do with this. The idea is, is somebody want to give us some benefits, not tell us what the feature is. Some benefits of something? Sure. sure. What? Who wants? Don't everybody go at once. We have a fireplace. That's a benefit. That's, no, that's the feature. All right. Feature. Benefits were um, it adds the ambiance. Uh, it could be the heat source, a focal point, and uh, also could be a uh, very romantic, help with the romantic setting. Oh, wow. I like the way you think. Young families. Something when the uh, internet's down. <laughs> that's right. And the TV doesn't work. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's what people used to do before they had TVs and internet. They'd sit around and look at fire, right? Yeah. Oh, oh. All right. And talk to each other. And talk to each other. Yeah. What, uh, any other? Give me, uh, how about another one? Okay, well, right. It also adds to privacy, and you have less street noise, right? Yeah. And more parking, and great for yard sales. Great for yard sales. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's and then do you want to talk about the lighting? Yeah, we also um, use the feature large kitchen. Uh huh. So we spoke about um, oh, did the you guys large. We did. Oh, nice. they did that. So I, I guess I'll mention a couple things if you guys want you guys to mention. So a couple things we talked about is some more storage area. We know that everyone likes to hang out in the kitchen, so there's more area for people to hang out. Yes, one of the um, one of the ways I heard this explained was the FAB, F A B system. Feature, advantage, benefit. And because and, and this takes a little bit of of work. So I, maybe. So a large kitchen is a feature, and advantage is, is that um, people can hang out there, right? right? The, what's the benefit of that? Then, uh, like my kids, he made a friend. She has little kids. The kids always want to eat. Or yeah. All right. For with so she's talking about children, um, families, eating together, right? Can, right. So but, but you you understand. So now we're talking about families being together, right? Do you understand that's more of a benefit. People having room for everybody to eat 
you know, what other things could you have in a large kitchen? So people, more people can be there. So how about social gatherings, right? So that entertaining with friends, fam other, you know, extended family. Do you understand the, 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 the reason why I had heard it as the FAB is, is that oftentimes when we say features and benefits, we get features and advantages, right? But the benefit would sometimes be more than just the stating the, more people can be there, right? Even the thing with the fireplace, well, it could be a source of heat. That's an advantage, which means less money spent on heating bills, which means more money each month, right? Do you understand? That's uh, going a little further. I was going to say, um, so with the large kitchen, the large kitchen would be the feature, and then the advantage would be that typically in a larger kitchen, there's more stovetop space and multiple ovens, which would eventually lead to the benefit of saving time because you have more places to cook your food in. Yeah, easier to cook. I like to cook. Uh, we, we combined it into a great room. So we had a great room that was joined through the family room and the kitchen. So it was, that's where most people live most of the time in their house. Live most of the time. Okay. All right, but you, does everybody get the idea that, the, the remember I highlighted the thing about uh, features are attached to the property, benefits are attached to the buyer. Right. What does this mean to you? All right. So there's this tip here. Listing agents will call buyer's agents who have shown the listing to get the reaction. And the property, how would they know? How would they know that you showed the property? Because you leave your business card. Well, so you don't. What? So you don't then. From the lockbox. From the lockbox. Oh, that electronic key system. Did you know that the listing agent can log in and see who's used the key safe? Yeah. So we know, we know whether you leave your card or not, who you are, what you did, right? We know you were there, All right? Um, you, th this is, I mean, the, the board has orientations on this, which are also important. If your buyer is not interested in it, you can explain why, if you participate in the feedback. On properties that your buyer interested in, don't give them too much feedback, right? Well, yeah, my buyers are interested. They think it's priced low. They think it's really the nicest one in the neighborhood. We've looked at all of them, and yours is a lot cheaper than the others. Right? You, 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 right? You understand? You do not want to be telling this to the listing agent. Right? So you have to remember you work for the buyer. Right? So recognizing buyer signals. I mentioned this a little bit. Body language, facial expressions, smiling, brightening, sometimes... Talking is a sign of nervousness sometimes when they stop talking. There are some couples that never stopped talking until they saw the house they liked. All of a sudden they stopped. It was like one of those movies where all the crickets stop at one time. You know, it's like you're in the jungle and everything is always goes silent. And you're like, that's, I was like, what, what happened, right? They stopped talking, right? That's a sign. If they start asking about seller's motivations, why is he selling his house? Where, where are they, right? Asking detailed questions about the disclosures, placing furniture, comparing it, discussing new paint or carpet, sitting down, unless they're, you know, have a bad foot or something. Um, becoming protective. I've actually had people ask me if I could keep, take the key out of the lockbox <laughs> so that other people can't, can't show it. <laughs> By the way, agents have done that. Asking to see it again, going back. Raising objections. I mentioned this a little bit, but the fact that they're making objections does not mean that they don't like the property, right? It just, it, in other words, if they wouldn't bother if they didn't have, if they didn't care, they wouldn't bother making objections. I think I discussed that a little bit. Um, each time, we're going to be finishing this up, each time you show a new property, ask your buyer to rank. We're, we're on page 8.18 on a scale of 1 to 10. Right? This is an important step. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being 0, I used to tell them in 5 not being an option. Hmm? Right? I'd say 5 isn't an option. But on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being perfect, 
and one being terrible, but without five being an option, where would you rate it? All right. Now, 90% of the time, you got a six or a seven. Um, sometimes I would say, what would be, what would you need if, if they said this is a six or a seven, I would say, so what, what's missing? What would make it an eight or a nine? What would make it a 10? Because sometimes what they say they need is something not that hard for them to get. Well, we need a new kitchen. Hmm. 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 You know, right? Because maybe, given the pricing and their qualifying, they could they could ha they could do that too. Does that does everybody understand the idea here? We want because at some point we want what we're trying to do is condition them to rating the properties with the idea of making an offer. Af ask if they want ask if they want to buy it. Would you, would you want to buy make an offer in this one? Do you want to buy this one? No. Why not? What's wrong with this one? Right. And by the way, I don't know if this sounds pushy to you. I, people would laugh, right? You know, I'd say, well, do you want to buy it? And by the way, you know, I was, I was taught to do this. And I was doing this, and the first time I did it, somebody said, yeah, I think we're going to buy it. <laughs> well, hell, let's go back to the office. All right? All right. Um, and so if, you, if not, why not? Do you understand what you're trying to do? And you may have to show them property more than once. But what you're trying to do is to really narrow it down. I may have mentioned that you sometimes they don't know what they want until they start looking, right? And they see what's available. When you finish showing homes, put all the MLS sheet in their order of ranking. Eliminate all but the top two. You don't seem very excited about, you know, these. Let's take them off the list. In fact... I used to take the pages of the ones at the bottom and crumple them up and throw them in the garbage can, right? Right? These, right? right? I, I, was, I don't know if that sounds melodramatic. I'd crumple them up, throw them away. Here are the, here are the top ones, right? Between these two or these three, right? Based upon their rankings, right? You don't, uh, uh, anyhow, take the highest scoring home and say, so this is the one to beat. If nothing beats this one, it's going to be your new home. It does meet everything on your checklist. I can see why you're excited about it, right? If they only gave one a nine, and the uh, there's a couple of eights, right? So this is the one to beat. Ask them to make an offer. Once they have clearly narrowed the, the highest ranking house, help them focus on the next step. So would it make sense for us to go back to the office, do some research on house prices in the neighborhood to see what would be a good offer, right? The, the thing, and... Um, there's a little bit more here about how to about uh, how much more miss am I going to do today? Uh, um, let's go back to the office and look at the numbers, see if it makes sense. And it's, I've had people say, "Well, you know, we're not we're not sure we want to buy it." Well, I understand that, right? That's why I'm suggesting we go back to the office, and we look at the numbers, and see if it makes any sense. I'm not asking you to buy it. I'm just saying, why don't we go back to the office? See, one of the things that I've learned is that people will not sign blank contracts. I used to try to get them to do that, but they wouldn't do it, right? And so when we get back to the office, I would run the numbers, right? I'd have the MLS to do it. But what we're doing here is what's called a CMA, right? What is CMA? CMA it's uh, Country Music Awards. No, it's, <laughs> wait a second. That's not right. A comparative market analysis. By the way, one of the programs that will help you with this is called the Realtor Property Resource, which you get when you're a member of the MLS, which if you put in an address, well, basically, there's one of the modules is designed for helping a buyer make an offer. So you look at the numbers. What I used to do is I would go through the purchase and start writing things in it. Right? And people sometimes would say, we're not sure we want to buy this one. I understand. I, but I'm just trying to get everything down on paper, right? We're just look, seeing how it looks, right, and writing it up. And then what I have also know is that, so you have to learn how to read the contract upside down. We're going to have a class on the contract, but I try, and I would go through it with them, right? And then at the end, after, so you understand, until you've gone over the numbers for how you would structure an offer, how much are you going to offer, when would you close, how much you're going to, we're going to cover all that, but... As you fill out the form, you 
turn it around and you and you explain to them now if we were making an offer on this one, this is we would be offering this amount, we put down this much money, we're gonna remove add, increase the deposit to this amount of this day, right? And at the very end, after I'd gone through the entire purchase contract, I would ask them a closing question. And a closing question is a question that's designed to get them to make a decision. And I was taught what the perfect closing question was in this particular instance, to get them to sign a, a contract. The perfect closing question. Does anyone, would you like to know what it is? Yes. It was, any questions? <laughs> All right, I've just explained the contract, got to the very end, and I'd say, any questions? Now, if they said, well, we're not too sure, well, I'd answer the questions, right? Then I would say, any questions? Any questions? And they're like, no. I would take the pen and I would hand it to one of them. And I, I used, we used to have three part, four part forms. And uh, by the way, there's still some advantage. You can do this using, there's paper you can buy that goes through a laser printer from Kelly Paper that is no carbon. And I would hand it and I'd say, okay, Mr. Johnson, you get to go first. Press hard. There's like, you know, there's several copies right here. And I, you hand them the pen and you point to where you want them to sign. Hmm? Any questions? No? Do you have any questions? Great. Here, right there, sign. Yes? Did you go through every, uh, explain to them what every paragraph was? It's pretty much, except for the part where it has all of the legal terms. Okay. Right? You know, I would explain what time is of the essence means on that page, but... Um, I would give them the gist of it. Some of them, you say, well, this is for if there's tenants and there aren't any tenants and this one, you know, and, and all that sort of stuff. And I would explain what the buyer inspection advisory meant, that, there, that, that the fact that this is an engagement, not a marriage at this point, right? That, that they're going to get uh, inspections and reports and we're going to have a chance to read it. And if everything, you know, the, you know if it doesn't look good, they don't have to buy it, right? Yes. But now, could they say they weren't sure, so you kind of told them what to offer? Well, I was showing them what has, what the, 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 the realtor property resource is actually going to punch up a number, right, based upon what other sales are. And what you need to do is look at what's happening to pending sales. Is the market going up or going down? It's going up, right? Do you understand? Are there multiple, what is the average list to sales price, it's like 102% of the list price is what the sales price is right now. So people are not lowballing, they're going up. But you understand you can't just, you have to really do a comparative market analysis on that house, right? It would be better to have done this before you showed it, right? But this is time consuming. The realtor property resource will make it easier for you to do this. Yeah. Right. If when I was a listing agent, I would have a binder in the house and it had a CMA. Right. But I only included those properties that seemed to suggest that our list price was good. Right. If there was a property that threw my numbers off, I just didn't put it there. Right. I did. Why should I? My job is to get the seller the highest price possible. So I might have colored the CMA a little bit to make it look good for the listing okay. price. Right. What you ought to do is do one that's more neutral, right? And there are, this. I can't do the how to do a CMA, but you're going to see that there are videos on how to use the software and the realtor property resource, which has graphs and charts, it's marking up, going down, you know what I mean? All this sort of stuff and heat maps, it's got all the whistles and bells, it'll help you do this fairly quickly, right? But one of the things that you need to be good at, right, if you want a buyer to, to trust you, Right. So that when you're showing the properties, you're driving around, you say, now that one over there sold last month and closed and it went for X amount of money. And then over here, that one's pending. They have had it on. And when you have read the history and can talk about the history of properties, they feel a lot more comfortable in following your advice. Right. If you've never previewed any of the homes, this is the first time you've seen any of the homes. 
You've never done a market analysis. You don't know what the ones that have sold for, sold for, right? You know, if you don't know those numbers, you um, may not be prepared enough to get them to sign a piece of paper, right? Any, is this, any questions? All right, um, there's a video called Objections to Making an Offer, which I'm going to give you the, uh, you're going to have to find that online because what I've done all I'm going to do today. Uh, I, I, it's a union job. And uh, I have a union rep someplace. 